Today we're gonna compare the FLIR One Edge Pro with the Thermal Masters P2 Pro. Sure, they may not be the exact same style and FLIR has a version that attaches to the bottom too, but this is the first one I got from FLIR. So this is what Thermal Master sent to me to compare it to and also try to use for our car review channel, the straight pipes, which I like to use for filming heated seats, heated steering wheels. And today with this cool macro lens, we are going to try to film a heated windshield as well to see how that works. So comparing the FLIR One Edge Pro, which is the thermal camera that FLIR sent to me against the uh, Thermal Master P2 Pro, the Thermal Master P2 Pro is $349 US and the FLIR One Edge Pro is $499 US. And I guess the FLIR One Pro is closer of a competitor because it plugs in to your phone the same way and that's $399. But since the FLIR One Edge Pro is what I started with, that's why I'm going against the P2 Pro that they sent me. And then there's also a P2, which is a smaller one that's 249, but it does not have iPhone compatibility. So that's why we got the P2 Pro. Operating temperatures are pretty similar. We got minus four degrees to 112 degrees Fahrenheit on the P2 Pro. And then the FLIR One Edge Pro will do minus four degrees to 752 degrees. I don't know if that extra 300 degrees or whatever matters, but that's pretty cool. Resolution on the Thermal Master P2, 256 by 192, and then the resolution is 160 by 120 on the FLIR One Edge Pro. The Thermal Master P2 has some like sharpening built in, so that's cool, but it doesn't have a secondary camera like the FLIR One Edge Pro does. So you can do like a cool overlay thing. Let me see if the FLIR One Pro also, I think the FLIR One Pro also has a camera here. So you can do that cool overlay where the Thermal Master P2 only has like the image in the top left corner or whatever for overlays, which I guess is pretty all right. It's cool that the FLIR One Edge Pro, you can like move around wirelessly and uh, kind of stick it places that's not strictly attached to your phone and still see it where the Thermal Master has to be attached to your phone. But the Thermal Master has a macro lens that magnets on, which is cool. So that'll be fun for checking out like heated windshields and maybe circuit boards and stuff like that. And then they both have their apps. There's a FLIR app for FLIR and a Thermal Master app for Thermal Master. So let's get to testing the rest of the stuff out. All right, I'm gonna connect this wirelessly to my older iPhone. And uh, with FLIR, we do it all wirelessly with this one. All right, so we're connecting. Let's see how long it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 13 seconds. And then I can shoot this way, shoot that way, and also attach it to my phone and use it like this. Very cool. Thermal Masters, okay. We got an app called Temp Master, and then we just plug our phone in this way. And if we count that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven seconds. So that's quicker. And uh, this one feels more fluid. It feels like this one's got a higher frame rate than this one. And what we can also do is unplug this and plug it in the other way. So it's facing us. So if I want to like look at my face, I guess. Okay, here we can see my uh, beard. If I go X3, everything gets sharper. So it's just got like a filter around it. So I don't know if you want that or not, but we'll figure that out. And then if we go through this app real quick, the first thing is our temperature points. So 
Uh, we can click point and then that'll give me that. I think we have three points we can use. And then uh, if we delete that temp display, that'll just show the highest, the lowest, and whatever in the center. If I click line, I think you can get an average through a line. I guess that's good for a pipe. If you uh, use a box, you can just get like the average temperature in that box. So that's pretty cool for isolating stuff. Circle, same thing. Might be good for heated steering wheels. All temp display and font color. Not gonna mess with that. Next screen, we've got our different colors that we can use. I'm obviously going to stick with uh, iron red because that's the most easily understood temperature, I guess, the way to check. Here we have our photo or video. Is it filming? Is it filming? There. Hey, 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 video. So we're getting the audio from the iPhone as well. This one is our transparency for the photo, for the front. So right now it's facing the front camera. So here, let's do. Okay, there we can see the, uh, wait, what's this line? Why is this hot from my arm? Whoa. That's neat. All right, so we can see what we're actually showing and then we can adjust the transparency and we can move this around. So I guess the heat from this FLIR 1 is coming from this USB port. That's where the majority of the heat is, but then yeah, I guess I can't really see it on, on this. Anyways, maybe that's something that's better with the macro. Then the next page, hey, let's turn off this thing. The next, actually, let's, let's test what it looks like. Yeah, that's with the sharpening or whatever. And then the last one we can. Is it facing me there with the last one we can rotate mirror so that makes more sense for me watching it scale that's so you can see the the temperature range and then you can i think you can also you can adjust that but then you can also manually here can we we can edit so my low temperature i want it to be minus 20 and my high temperature it's going to be 100 this is a celsius i believe And I feel like the FLIR has something similar. Contrast, you can like really crank and reduce. I think keep everything at 50, but maybe that's good for like really highlighting something. Like that's weird. So that's cool too. Yeah, a lot of good features here. What does this shutter do? Calibrate, okay, it calibrates it. And here we can adjust the temperature range because I don't think you can do the full range all at once on both these cameras. Radio metric mode. Okay, so I guess there's two radio metric modes in each of these cameras. That's pretty cool. It takes a little while to adjust. All right. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to stick to the normal minus 20 to 150 degrees Celsius. That makes sense to me. So now let's see what the FLIR app can do. Uh... Uh, yeah, very, a lot of good features. A lot of good features. Stoked on all these things. Okay, join. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Definitely longer to connect, but that's cute. Okay, so if we go through the menus on this FLIR camera. Okay, let's point it at my face again. Uh, the first thing we can do is this button on the left. That, well, okay. Let's go back to the main menu. Mode. This is the mode that the Thermal Master has. It's just the infrared mode, right? Then you can do just the video, which the Thermal Master doesn't have because it doesn't have two cameras. And then we can do this overlay mode so that it overlays that camera so you can see exactly what you're looking at. So to adjust that, see how it doesn't match my glasses, you slide 
uh, this thing up or down for how far you are away. So we got that. That's a mode that the thermal master doesn't have. And then if we go to our measure, we can have our center point only, our hottest point as well, and our coldest point. So I don't think we can like pick random points like we can on the thermal master. So that's a cool point for the thermal master. We've got our uh, thing in the top left, our auto slash manual uh, temperature thing. So if we go to manual, it goes much bigger and then we can adjust on a slider instead of typing, which is cool. And then here, let's, let's go like the full hottest, okay. But then that doesn't look nearly as cool as if you went to, kept it in auto mode, right? So auto mode is pretty good for all this stuff. Then if we look, yeah, our frame rates, it's a, I think like eight frames a second, laggier than the thermal master slower frame rate, but at the end of the day, like doesn't really, really matter. But I guess for videos it's nice, but I actually prefer to just record the iPhones for when I'm using it on my car show because I think it looks cooler than using the actual footage on both, I think. Okay, uh, mode, color, got the same colors, all that weird stuff. I like to stick to iron because that's the thing everyone else seems to understand. And uh, let's see, was there up here? And that's, that's it for settings. We can't flip the image. We can't mirror the image. There's a lot of cool stuff that, oh, performance mode. I think that makes it run faster, but the other one gives you better image quality. I prefer the image quality, but there's a lot of things that this doesn't have that the Thermal Master does have, like flipping the thing around and mirroring it. So a lot of cool stuff for Thermal Master and this small uh, macro magnet lens, which we're gonna test out. So I can definitely see why for this, you're getting a lot of features that you don't get from here. But then also this has like the crazy feature of, I can just point it this way, right? I can get it up high above stuff that you can't see. Oh, what's that heat? Oh, that's that light, that lady light. While maintaining looking here, so if I need to stick this into something, I got that option. So let's go to the car and test out the heated steering wheel, heated seats, and the heated windshield to see uh, if it looks any different on either of these cameras, if one's better than the other in auto mode, and if we're just happy with both, and then you can decide which one you want to buy because both these companies sent it to me for free. So I'm not going to pick either one. I'm just going to show you the differences. Okay, so we are now in a Nissan Murano. I've got the Thermal Master plugged in at the bottom here on this mount. I've got the uh, Fleer right here, and we are going to turn on the car and see how well they track the heat of the heated steering wheel. Right away, we can see that we've got the cool overlay here, which if we do this, we can line up perfectly. So that's really nice. And on this one, we don't have any of that. We just have um, kind of the shape with sharpening. And if we turn off sharpening, we get some noise. I, I kind of don't mind the noise, but I'll go sharpening since I guess that's like one of the features. Both have been going for a few minutes and we can see we're at 41 degrees Celsius and we can see the cool pattern with the Thermal Master. And then with the FLIR one, we can also see that the Temperature is reading in the same spot at 45 degrees and we can see the cool pattern But the pattern comes out a little wackier looking here now. That's like 44. So they're both pretty accurate. What if we turn off the Wacky mode I mean still looks cool. I feel like the pattern looks a little cooler here than it does on the other one um, Yeah, that's that's pretty neat but then this one, we can see like the logo on the steering wheel. And I guess you probably, probably saw that this fell. I think the FLIR is rated, uh, got some drop rating, which the uh, Thermal Master probably doesn't. But yeah, both of these, for what I'm using it for, for seeing how hot a heated steering wheel is and the pattern on that, both seem to be working pretty well. Let's see, we got 50 degrees Celsius on this one in the bottom right. And this one is also reading that at 48. And it's kind of nice how this is right next to the pin. And this is in the top left corner, I guess keeps the image clearer, but that makes it easier to see exactly what the temperature is. So that's, that's cool. Yeah, overall, super happy with both of them for this test. Next, let's do the heated seats and then we'll do the heated windshield.
All right, and that'll show what the steering wheel looks like without the overlay on the FLIR, which honestly, the Thermal Master kind of looks a little cooler, but definitely looks like very processed. Oh, you know what? Before we go to the seats, we should probably test out like the whole circle thing. Oops, let's make that circle. Oops, let's delete those and make that circle bigger. Interesting. I guess we don't need like an average temperature of that, but I guess that keeps the cold part away from like the windows and stuff. Nice. Okay, what if we put a point right here and a point there? A point in the middle. So without the heated, it's 19 degrees. With the heated, it's 37. Uh, let's put that point right at the hottest part. Yeah, I just like it when it's um, automatically telling me the temperature display. All right, this one's a hard one to see because they're both taped outside to get the seat, but I'm gonna turn the seat on and we're gonna look at the footage and see what that looks like. Okay, so obviously hard to see because of the glare, but I think the FLIR looks better for the heated seats. So I'm gonna give it to the FLIR for that. This just looks like a, a lot crunchier, I guess, not as accurate. Or you can't see the lines as, de more, as detailed as you can in this one. But still both pretty good. Let's see if the temperatures are the same. We're getting a reading of about 23 degrees at the hottest on the thermal masters and 28 on the FLIR. Interesting. All right, another thing I've noticed, since the letters are uh, where the dot are on the thermal master, it's hard to read where on the FLIR, they've got a nice gray background, which makes them easy to read. And it looks like our heated seats get up to 31 slash 27 degrees Celsius. All right, both cameras, the Thermal Master and the FLIR have been on watching the heated windshield for like two minutes and nothing seems to really be happening. So we're gonna switch to the macro lens on the Thermal Master and get close up. All right, so I can get up close to this Nissan logo that's like an inch away. So take an inch away from the glass and see like I'm getting close, but I cannot see the little melty lines on the windshield getting hot. And here we have our heated windshield on and with that off. Uh, I don't know if the windshield's getting any hotter. I mean, it looks kind of hotter there. Maybe it's not hot here because of the snow. All right, with this one, you can see the temperature of a non-heated window. And then here you can see how hot the heated windshield is and then that dark stuff is the snow on it. So it is working. You just can't see the close up little lines heat up. All right. So when it comes to the Thermal Master and the FLIR, which one am I picking? I'm actually going to use both interchangeably and I'm going to see what the audience on the straight pipes likes more. It is nice that, you know, this is so tiny that I can kind of just sneak it in anywhere. This is a lot bigger, but it is nice that it is, uh, it can fall and that it can attach around the phone. And I really like how this has the double overlay stuff. This macro lens is going to come in handy at some point. I just don't know when, but it will be nice to see super close-ups of stuff that does get hot. The higher frame rate on this is definitely a plus, and the way the temperature follows the dot around is very cool. But then again, I do like how this is against the black background, so you can see the temperature very visibly at all times. I, uh, yeah, it's pre pretty cool. If you're looking to get into thermal cameras, both are really fun, at least I found. And I guess this one's a little cheaper, so you can start with this one and then move your way up to this one if you'd like. I don't really know. I don't really know what to say. I don't know how to end it. I'm gonna try using both as much as I can on the straight pipes and we'll go from there. But both have good things. Both have things that aren't the best. But let me know which one you would get in the comments below. FLIR or Thermal Masters? Thanks both these guys for sending these to test out.